Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 30. This week I'm going to be reinvestigating flash duration. Last time I looked into this back in episode number 23, I made a few mistakes. One of the biggest was that I used a 5600 OptiSchmidt circuit to measure the light duration, and that's a digital circuit. What I really wanted to do was have an analog circuit so that I could see the fall off of the light in the flash and more accurately uh, pick when the flash's light had actually ended. Another issue with that circuit was that I didn't have it wired quite correctly, so the fall off was much more gradual than it should have been. So those mistakes made those measurements invalid. And this week I'm going to be using a better light detection circuit so that uh, the results are more reliable. Also, a lot of people wanted not just the flash uh, duration, they also wanted the amount of light coming out of the flash. So this week I'm also going to try to make an attempt to measure that as well. So here's the basic setup I'll be using to measure flash duration. I've got an oscilloscope here to measure the voltage from this light sensor. This is provided by Alan, so a big thanks goes to him. Here's the basic circuit for that light sensor, so it's pretty simple. I will provide a link to uh, Alan's Flickr account where he talks a little bit more about how this circuit works and you can get some more details on the circuit there if you want. And then you've got the flash which is set to manual mode so you can control the exact power of the flash and then over here is a simple voltage regulator to provide uh, voltage to this sensor uh, to basically power it. So all you have to do is trigger the flash. So the output on the oscilloscope looks something like this. When you look at it, it goes from about 0 seconds to around 35 microseconds. So that means that the flash was on for about 35 microseconds. And from that you can calculate that the duration of the flash was about one twenty-nine thousandth of a second. I decided to measure all of the flash power settings for the Canon 580EX2 and while the shape of the uh, light uh, sensor's curve changes over time to this um, gentle fall off, uh, I found that the uh, duration increases significantly as you would expect. Uh, I also did the same experiment with uh, this young new 460 flash and um, have results for that one as well. And then what I did to measure the intensity of each flash was I set up a camera in a dark room with a fixed aperture and took some very simple pictures with the flash so that I could compare the intensities. This first one's the Canon 580EX2 and then the second picture is a young new 460 you can see that the uh, Canon is significantly brighter at the lowest power setting. Both of these were taken at the lowest power settings. And I did a little bit of investigation in uh, Lightroom and determined that the Canon flash is almost twice as bright as the uh, Young New flash at the lowest power settings. So after I collected all of the data, I created this spreadsheet. On the left side here, we have the flash power settings with 1 over 256 being the minimum power setting and uh, 1 over 1 being the maximum power setting. And this is in terms of the Canon scale. I had to create this 1 over 256 power setting because the Young Nu at its minimum power setting only produced half as much light as the Canon at its uh, minimum power setting. At the high end of the scale you can see that there's two more stops of light for the Canon flash. So that basically means that at the high end, Canon can output four times as much light as the Young New Flash. Uh, one interesting thing to point out at the minimum end is that the uh, minimum durations of the Young New and the Canon Flash seem to be the same. So for high speed photography, that's the most important number on this whole graph. You want to see how short of a flash duration you can get. It's easy to add another flash or adjust your ISO or f-stop in order to get enough light from the flash to, to light the photo. 
but it's hard to uh, decrease the minimum flash duration. So I would say, you know, if the flashes were the same price, the Canon flash is obviously better because uh, it's giving you more light in the same amount of time. But um, considering how much cheaper the young new flash is, for a lot of people in high speed photography, the young new flash is going to be a, a better choice. And this, of course, ignores all things like, you know, build quality and stuff where the Canon flash is much better. But just in terms of duration, the young new flash is, is pretty compelling, um, at least what we're seeing here in this, this graph, or this table. Now down here in the graph, what you're seeing is you're seeing a, an exponential increase in duration, um, where duration is measured here in the vertical axis, time in milliseconds, or microseconds I mean. So that's to be expected because the uh, amount of light output is, is increasing exponentially. At each um, one of these stops, the light uh, output is doubling. So what we see here is that the young new flash time increases, um, but doesn't output as much light. And the Canon, uh, the time also increases, you know, roughly the same rate, but it's uh, outputting a lot more light. And like I said up here, you know, you can see it more clearly. You're, you're getting two more stops between this point and this point. So that's four times as much light between this point and this point. And then down here on the minimum ends, you're getting twice as much light in the same amount of time on the, the Canon flash. I found these results pretty interesting and I hope the results were useful to you as well. Thanks for watching.